Hey, and welcome to another video on Autogen. And today we're gonna to be going over Autogen Studio UI. This is exciting because now we have a no code way of creating our agents and having our own workflows. We're gonna cover everything on the UI, so let's get started. Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is install Autogen Studio. How we do that is you open up your terminal in your IDE and you'll type pip install Autogen Studio. Okay, so once that's finished downloading, the next thing we need to do is because for the first example, I'm going to show you how to use it with OpenAI. So we'll need to export our key. So you'll type in export OpenAI API underscore key equals, and then you'll type in your API key. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Then you just click enter and you'll be done. And now we're ready to start the server. And to do that, you just type in autogen studio UI dash dash port. And then you put the port number 8081 here. And when you press enter, it's going to go ahead and start to boot up a local host server for us so that we can check the UI. Once that's done, you just click this local host URL you're given, and then it will open up the UI for you. The UI may look a little overwhelming at first, but we're going to go through each tab in each section. So let's get started. Okay, there are three tabs over here. We have skills, agents, and workflows. Skills are kind of like the functions that we have coded before. Agents, uh, this is where you actually create the agents that you want to create a workflow with. And then the workflow is essentially saying, okay, we have the user proxy and we want to initiate the chat with some agent. And this is what kicks everything off. So if we look at this example for a general agent workflow, we have the name of the workflow, the description, the summary method just means how we want to get the message that is retrieved from an agent. And then you can see we have the sender and the receiver agents. And then we have the section for the sender and the receiver. So if we open up the user proxy, the name is user proxy, we have the agent description, we have the max consecutive auto replies, which we have seen before, we've seen this in code, and a human input can always be never, terminate, or always. The system message here we have seen before, this is how we are describing what we want to do with the agent. We have a model and a skills section here where the model section is you could enter a different GPT model or local model that you wanted to use. So this agent could use GPT-4 or it could use GPT-3.5 Turbo, whatever you want to use here. And then the skills, this is where you create the functions and you attach it to this agent. So for instance, here is a Python function that was created to generate and save images. So we would attach this to another agent that would execute this function based off of a query that's given. Now we're back to this workflow. For the receiver, it has a primary assistant where the description is the default assistant to generate plans and write code to solve tasks. This is the same UI here. We have the name of the agent, the description, the max uh, auto replies. This is the system message that we would give in code, but you can just put it here in this text area. And then you can choose uh, one of these models here that have already been predefined for us. This agent was given a couple skills, uh, the one to find papers and another to generate the images. You can choose which functions or skills that you want the agents to have. Okay, so that was the workflow, but let's go back a little further to how we actually create the agent. So here, what you would do is you can click create new agent. We can just name it sample assistant. The, this is the description, the sample assistant uh, gives help and nothing else. We set the max auto reply to two. And now for the system message, we just want to say you will help us enter simple math questions. Now I can say now I can have this one have a specific model, the GPT-4 preview, and no skills. Okay, awesome. And now we have created our sample assistant. Now if we go to the skills tab, we can go back a little bit further. These are where all the functions are that we can assign to an agent. For instance, we can have a function to search for papers. So if we open this one up, you can see that here is the search function. And then if we scroll down, it does the import for us. And this is all of the Python code that would be executed when it's attached to an agent. To recap this part, we have the skills, which are the functions that you can create for agents, the actual agents, where you click the new agent button over here, and then you just create the agent that you want. And then the workflow. And this is how you can assign agents and initiate a chat with each other. Now, if we wanted the new workflow, you would just type in new workflow, and we would say, math workflow you could say the same thing here and then we have the user proxy but instead of the primary assistant and you may have to click on a whole separate assistant here so you might need to click on user proxy and then go back to sample assistant so it actually uh, fills in the correct information and then you click ok and now you see we have the user proxy and the sample assistant okay great we went over the build tab and this is where you set up all the functions the agents and the workflows that we want to execute 
kind of like building up all the work. And now we go to the playground, which is where we actually execute one of the workflows so we can start the chat with agents. On the left hand side here, you see all the sessions. Now, if you click the green button for new, here you have a drop down of all of the workflows that we created in the build tab. So we created one called math workflow. So we're going to click that, then hit create. Now in the code, when we would say user proxy initiate chat, there is some message that you have to put in there for the chat to start. And this is what we're going to do here. We're going to ask what is X in this function? Three X minus four equals 16. Now, if we go back to our IDE, you can see here the user proxy initiated the chat with the sample assistant. This is what we see whenever we start the Python file in code. Okay, so it came back with a final message for us, and it says the value of x in the equation, 3x minus 4 equals 16, is approximately 6.67. Now, what you can see here is there's this little tab that says agent messages, and there's four of them. So if you go ahead and click this, this is the conversation, the whole conversation between the user proxy and the sample assistant. So the user proxy said, what is x in this function, 3x minus 4 equals 16? This is the question that we asked. Then the sample assistant came back with something. I think it actually came up back with steps and then some code to execute. And then the user proxy executed the code and then had an answer for us. So when the sample assistant, uh, the code was executed, the sample assistant says, okay, well, here is the final answer for you. And if we scroll up, this is the same message, the same last message that we see here. One of the things I like about Autogen is the cache system. So how does that translate to this UI? Well, we have created our first session over here. So on the left-hand side, under the session, you can either delete it or publish it. Well, if we click publish, you can see session successfully published. Now, the last tab is the gallery tab. So if you click the gallery tab, well, guess what? Now that we published it, we said, okay, we really want to cache this now so that we can see later. So if you click this, this is going to give you the question that was asked the last message, and then we still have the drop down of the full conversation. Now, if we go back to the playground tab and you click delete, of course, the session is removed from the playground. But if you go back to gallery, you can still see it here. And this is a way so you don't have to clog up the UI if you're messing around with different sessions. You can delete it as long as you publish it so it's stored in the gallery. Thank you for watching. And for more videos on Autogen, click here to learn more, and I'll see you next time.